Hello and hello booktube, my name is Lucy and this is Books with Brushes. Today I thought I would talk about my reading story. We all have a reading story, you know, our origins if you will. When did we start reading? When did we love reading? How did it all begin for me? Something I thought you guys, you know, might be interested to see more about me, learn more about how reading became such a big part of my life. And I always think it's really interesting to hear other people's stories, you know, because everyone's is so totally unique. Sometimes we feel like our lives are just the same as other people's, but they never are. There, there's always a different story, there's always a different background, and today I'm going to go over mine. First of all, we're going to go right back to the start. <laughs> Let's go right on back to when I was a baby. Um, I didn't talk very much as a baby, in fact I was a very late speaker. I, they thought I had brain problems because I didn't talk till I was about three. And that's, qu that's quite late. <laughs> um, but apparently I was just absorbing in all the words and not saying them. And then I started talking and I never shut up. Yeah, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Yeah, my first word was like a first sentence. Um, and suddenly I just started talking and my parents were like, what? And so that's a pretty, you know, funny thing. Um, reading wise, obviously, start with the classics, Mr. Men. <laughs> when you're a kid, you know, reading's great and stories are great. My favourite Mr. Men was Topsy Turvy. Of course, Dr. Zeus was prime. And then you get a bit older and, you know, then I started to explore a bit more. I didn't read a lot as a kid, uh, not loads, but I loved it when I did. Well, when my parents kind of helped me read it because I wasn't very good at it at that age. And we kind of started to read like kind of kids books like Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl was one of my favourites. I loved all his books. My favourite was George's Marvelous Medicine. I loved, you know, Matilda, Charlie's Chocolate Factory, James and Giant Peach. Oh, so many. The Twits. Oh, The Twits. <laughs> There were so many books that I absolutely loved reading. Me and my parents would read them together in bed. And like, you know, bedtime story kind of thing. And then that's when I kind of stopped reading after that. I got to a stage where reading became really difficult. And I thought, oh, you know, books are, books are a bit boring now. I know, sacrilege. And then I was in middle school and we'll say about year three or four and I was special needs. What that means is when you're a kid and they say, hey, you're too stupid. Why don't we put you in a special program? Ooh, I can't speak. Why don't we put you in a special program for kids who are stupid? So that was fun, you know, they had to call it special needs, which is unnecessary. Yeah, basically what it meant was, I, you know, I was a slower learner. I had a lot of difficulties with things. I would get things all messed up. Um, my right handwriting was atrocious. I knew a lot of vocabulary for a kid. I was very well spoken. I just couldn't speak or write it. I struggled to communicate what I had in my brain. <laughs> uh, it became difficult. And then I had this reading group. It's great. I had this teacher. I mean, bless her. She had this whole group of kids who couldn't really read in year four, who should be reading by now and she had to teach reading group. Unfortunately for me, what that means is they pulled you out of every fun class you had. So reading became a punishment. It became something that was mocked because I was not good at it. You know, when they, art, obviously my favorite, and art and PE were the two best lessons when you were a kid, the two things you look forward to. And every art and PE, I was just pulled out so I could go to this stupid reading group with this stupid teacher, with a stupid book. <laughs> just, I didn't like the book, I didn't like the other kids in the class. I didn't, just hated it. it. It, like I said, it became punishment and that was probably the time I hated reading most in my life. But, you know, for good reason. And it was horrible, I hated it. I remember this one day really specifically where I had art and PE that day and I see the, the reading group teacher walk in and I'm like, I'm about to have a strop <laughs> and I got all angry and yeah it was not it was PE and everyone's getting changed in there to their kits and I'm getting changed and I'm like yeah we're playing dodgeball today and I loved dodgeball and I was really excited and then yeah she comes in and I'm like no you're not taking me out PE not again this like put my foot down I like, draw the line and I got so angry and she had to practically drag me out of that class and I was like, I'm making a protest. And 
yeah, it was horrible. That whole class was sat there just like refusing to even speak. So angry. Later on, I thought, oh, well, at least I got art class today. <sighs> yeah, later on, rocks around art class. Oh, yes, that project I've been waiting to do for months. I've been waiting for that art project, and we get it, and I'm so excited. And then in walks the reading teacher, and I'm like, no. <laughs> and I get so angry at her, and I kick a fit enough so that they let me stay in the art class and I got like a, a no on my record for reading group and I didn't care and I got to do my art class and I got to do the project which so it worked out okay but, I, but then it still ruined the art lesson because I was bitter through the whole thing just me yeah you let me stay <laughs> so yeah reading became a, a punishment and a bad thing for me for a long time then I, I completed the reading group that was good it was like letting go and then I get a bit older and I'm in senior school and I remember thinking, right, you know, I'm in big girl school now and I remember going into the library and being super excited. I thought, yeah, why don't I go and have a look at all the books and maybe I could find something really cool, you know, books when you get older. And I was really excited and I walked in and I checked out a bunch of books and went home and they were, they were shit. <laughs> Basically, they were utter crap. I thought, oh. So reading when you're an adult is crap, basically. It's boring. It's no longer the good old days of Dr. Zeus and Roald Dahl. And reading's rubbish. So I kind of went through senior school not reading. So many wasted years. <laughs> and then this is where kind of the story, where did I get the reading bug, which now I, I will never get rid of. <laughs> and that is when I was about, I don't know, 16 or say and my mum I think it was my mum gave me like an autobiography I have a lot of uh, autobiographies hold on I will get you on this was the one in question because you may not know this about me but I love comedians and I absolutely love stand-up comedy observational comedy I find it so funny I watch all the panel shows you know mock the week taskmaster would I lie to you you know, even like some of the really, really old ones, like Whose Line Is It Anyway? Freaking love Whose Line Is It Anyway? Does anyone know that show? But that was a show. Anyway, <laughs> so for my birthday, I loved Lee Evans. One of my favourites, me and my friends love Lee Evans. I still do. I've seen him at concert. And so because I love Lee Evans, she got me Lee Evans, The Life of Lee. Here it is. <laughs> She gave me this book and so I can learn more about him. Um, I've also got a few more comedians. I've got a few down here, but that's for another time. Anyway, <laughs> that's my Lee Evans The Life Fleet book and that was the one she got me for my birthday. And I read it in, I think it was like two and a half term or something. And I read it and it was brilliant. I really recommend that book. And if you're not into reading, you know, autobiographies, because I know, you know, we're the fiction types, but sometimes they can be really interesting and written well they are brilliantly entertaining so if you have like a famous figure that you like think about buying a biography because i've got a few and they're really really cool i read that book and it's amazing his one is brilliant like it's not like really funny like michael McIntyre's biography is really really funny but yeah the life of lee is is funny in places but it's also got a lot of tragic story in it which i wasn't expecting you know i didn't think that there would be so much tragedy in his life and it was so ups and downs and it was a brilliant brilliant story so fantastically written and I, I i loved it and i got to the end and i was like no i finished it what am i supposed to do now so i read it from the beginning again <laughs> back to back that's what i did because i had nothing else to read and that's when i first thought oh this this reading is cool you know that was really fun, that's one of the most fun I've had in ages, like, I know that's kind of sad, but <laughs> there was something about reading that was just totally took me away, and it was interesting, and I just, I know, I, I didn't know it quite yet, but I wanted more. And then, not very long after, I had a friend who, I, you know you have one of those friends who, like, you really respect their, like, taste in, like, TV and whatever, and you have that one friend, the same as they say, oh, I love this band, or I love this TV show and you just know that you're gonna like it as well because you're into the same sort of things. I had a friend like that and she was telling me about this, this really cool film she saw. 
she said it was amazing, it's brilliant, it's just come out, it's brand new, and she was telling me how great it was, it's just come out on DVD, and I never heard of it, so she told me the name of it, and it was called The Hunger Games. Yep. <laughs> so I can pinpoint when that was, I think it was about 2012, correct me if I'm wrong, I can look it up after, I think it was March 2012, something like that and the Hunger Games movie came out and it was out on DVD and my friend Louise told me how cool it was and how amazing and she said there was a book series on it and she said they were brilliant and the films were really cool so I did watch the first Hunger Games film and it blew me away like the storyline, the topics, the subject matters the, how much it made me think, how much action there was just everything you could possibly want and it was brilliant after that I was like there was a book series on that and I really enjoyed that Life of Lee book. I wonder. <laughs> so I go on Amazon because, you know, Amazon is king. And I look it up, you know, the Hunger Games trilogy. And there it is. And I thought, oh, shall I buy that? I don't know if I want to spend my money on it. What if I don't like it? And then, you know, Amazon has like that little preview where you can like get the first few pages. So I thought, well, there's no harm in reading the first few pages. So I read the first few pages and I thought, this is, this is cool. I like where this is going. And I just enjoyed the act of reading it. And I thought, do you know what? So what, if I buy it and it ends up being crap, whatever. But I'm gonna give it a try. I think this is when half term was just starting. So I ordered it and I got it and read it straight away. And I read it flat out, like one cover to the other, all over the half term. Did not leave my room. And I read the whole trilogy, just the whole thing. I loved it. It was such a ride, it was brilliant. It was, oh, it was, an, it was a whole nother place. And the characters and the story, just everything about it made me so excited and just just took me along for the roller coaster that reading is. I was so amazed by it. I read the whole thing and as soon as I got to the end of Mocking Jay, I can remember emerging from my room because I was I was the hermit. I'd come out to you know go to the bathroom and get some food and nothing else. <laughs> and my parents like I haven't seen her at all. And I came out and I wandered downstairs, broken a broken human because you know sad events at the end of the book and I was like empty because of the events that happened but also because that's it it was over I'd finished the book like I spent this whole time reading it and now it was done so what do I do now I thought hmm and I couldn't stand it my mum had no idea what like stop being so dramatic <laughs> like she had no idea what I'd just been through and so I just went back and I read the whole thing again Hunger Games, I read it back to back twice, kind of just like I did with The Life of Lee, and I loved it, and I thought, this is amazing, I love this, and it became an instant favourite, and I attribute The Hunger Games to all this. Everything here is because of that, I think, because of how that hooked me. And there is nostalgia there, but I still think now that it is a brilliant story. It's intelligent, it's well written, well paced, it's amazing how, how just good it is, you know, the, the concept, of you know the Hunger Games, the concept of you know the politics and the dynamics and the, the characters and the awful positions they're in, and just everything. I I still think it's brilliant now. That also put me on my favourite genre, dystopian, because I love that. Like I said, there's something about it. You know, thinking about you know who are you, what can you do, morals, just all the things, and it's a genre I love. But that's what got me into reading, and from then on, I started to to branch out and uh, this is when I went through a massive Kindle phase. So you know you see those adverts, you know, the next Hunger Games and every book from then on was like telling it was the next Hunger Games, especially if it's a wire dystopian. So I went through a fair few. Some great, a few not so great, but mostly I, I got lucky and found some amazing ones which kept me on the reading track. A lot of those are still my mega favourites today. Um, amazing like work some known some not so known all of them amazing and I read those books it was about I don't know six or seven series and I read them all constantly all the time <laughs> I would just rotate between the seven I'd go on holiday and I'd just read by the pool and I loved it I loved rereading them and he ended up knowing like these books back to back and I loved them and that was fine that was great for a while because they were really great stories but you know, after a couple years, I was like, I've read the same books over and over again. And that was fine, but I was hunkering for something new, you know? And then I thought, do you know what? There's something I've never read, something I love 
which I have only seen the movies of, Harry Potter. <laughs> yep. And this, by that age, I was 19. Oh, 19. I loved the Harry Potter films and everything, and I loved the whole world and everything about it. And I knew the books were gonna be better than the movies because they always are, aren't they? The books, I thought, is it too late? It's never too late. It is never too late to read Harry Potter. So I did, I bought the whole box set. A massive Amazon box came to greet me at the door. I was so happy. Just, you know, seven hunkering books. They're all so gorgeous. They're right here. <laughs> I didn't have like all my originals because I, I, ha I have a couple. I'll explain those another time. But yeah, so I read all the Harry Potters and they were amazing. I loved every single second. And just like I knew, they were way better than the books. Like a million miles ahead. So much better. I couldn't even believe that the films were all I knew before then. The Harry Potter books. And again, I keep doing this. I read them back to back. That's what happens when I really like something. <laughs> well, not so much anymore because... TBR, am I right? But back then, when I had all the time in the world, I would reread, and so I read the Harry Potter like twice. Reread them a fair bit. I haven't reread them physically in a while, but I've got the audiobooks to them, and I listen to them on the constant. I listen to them while I work, I listen to them while I'm cooking. I probably read about, I don't know how many times now, <laughs> most of those being audiobooks. Stephen Fry. That's pretty much when I found Booktube. I don't know how I found it, I can't even remember. I was on YouTube and somehow I found it and I fell into this rabbit hole of... I completely got lost in all these book videos and people having passion for books. I just thought it was amazing, I loved it and here we are. <laughs> I've been watching booktube for a long time and just loving it and it inspired me and gave me ideas. I bought most of these books because of booktube, because of all the recommendations and the hype and people talking about these books and all of it. This is how we ended up here. And now I'm starting the next chapter, I suppose, in my reading story. And that chapter is my booktube life itself. Not the watching, but the viewing. <laughs> of course, I'll still interact with booktube and watch it. I'll be always be watching my booktube, but now I'm in it too. And this is the new chapter, and I wonder what else I'll discover, and how many more books I'll have. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my story, and it wasn't too long and rambly. <laughs> if there's any changes of camera angle, I'm really sorry about that, but this tripod, it... I'm working with what I got, people. The tripod's not good. I hope you enjoyed my reading story, and please let me know. What's your reading story? Because I want to know. Let me know down in the comments what your reading story is, because... I think they're all really interesting and I'd love to hear yours. Okay, I'll see you in another video. Bye!